appreciate your heart for missions and um, the support you've shown me um, with the work that I do within Sands Orphans Outreach. So um, this February, I got to go back to Kenya. I was there last February, and um, I got to go a little longer this year. I was gone a total of 14 days on my trip. And uh, shout out to my husband, Phil, because he took care of the kids and handled everything at home and was great and supportive and didn't complain a bit. <laughs> so on this, uh, this trip, we're building a rescue center for vulnerable children, uh, children that are either orphaned or um, have families that really can't care for them. But we also do a lot of work with the orphans and the widows, um, because a lot of the widows are providing for orphans. They're often taking in other children who have nobody whose parents you know, have died from AIDS or um, you know, other things, or the children have been abandoned. And so we like to um, help support them with food and supplies, resources, and also help them try to start some kind of a business so that they can become sustainable. Um, so in the picture are some of the kids that we are helping in Kenya. There's three different shots. Can we go to the next slide? So the Children's Rescue Center is built in a rural community in Kisi County called Wanjari. And when I was there last February, the ground had just been leveled out. It was very uneven. This year, it just started the very end of January, the construction. So we're really excited. And as you can see in the, the pictures, um, cement's now getting poured on the ground level and they're starting to build up walls. And what's great about, um, about this rescue center is uh, it's going to house both boys and girls. And we're starting with the ground floor because right now that's all we have the funding for. It'll be separated. Half will be for girls, half will be for boys with separate entrances on each side. Um, there will be washrooms with actual toilets and showers and sinks for the children to use. Um, there will be a large pavilion um, that will also have a kitchen and an area for them to do homework and activities and different things throughout the day. And that will be used as kind of a multi-purpose area. And as we get the funding, we're going to build up. So eventually it will be four stories high. The first floor is going to um, be either girls or boys, and then the next one will be the other. So there will be one girl floor, one boy floor. Then there will be a missionary quarters where the missionaries will live. And then there will be um, visitor quarters. So when we have teams come, they can stay right there on the property. Can you go to the next slide, please? So this is Jim Reed. And I would ask that you pray for Jim Reed. Uh, he's from Effingham, Illinois. He's retired. And he has spent seven months now in Kenya. Most of that time alone, except for when we visited. And uh, he is overseeing the whole project. And none of this would be possible without Jim. His wife, Cheryl, is still here. And um, he has a new grandbaby that he's only got to see one time because he's given up all of this time to be in Kenya overseeing this project. And Jim is an amazing man of God. And if you ask Jim, you know, Jim, what brought you to, to Kenya? He'll say, I just felt something come over me saying I could not do it. And he, God has given him this burden. And I tell Jim, like, you're, you're a modern day Nehemiah because God has just put this on your heart to go and build it, and everything that's come up and all the frustrations, he is just sticking with it, and he um, is seeing just amazing things happen. And so I think it gets very lonely at times for him over there and probably sometimes very frustrating, but he is doing an amazing work, and um, if you would just pray for Jim and Cheryl, I know they would appreciate it. The next slide is the water tower and the well that we're building. In this community, there are no wells. So um, when they picked the location and they dug this well and they struck the water, it was such a blessing. Everybody like from the community came and they were just watching the water pouring out over the street. And you know, some people would say, with no wells, it's a shot in the dark if you're gonna pick the right place. But we know with God, it's not a shot in the dark because God knew where that well needed to be. And they're putting out 45 gallons of water a minute. It's good, clean water. Um, this community is going to be able to get clean water for the first time in their lives. They spend many hours of their day just hauling water back and forth, back and forth from streams. It has bugs and dirt and limbs and bacteria in it. So for them to get clean water is really going to improve the health of the entire community. Um, and so we're super excited about how this well is coming along. Next slide. 
these are some of the um, orphans that we take care of. And um, we have some children that we are getting sponsors for. If you think child sponsorship would be something that you know God puts on your heart, um, you can talk to me more about that. But these children, we're paying for their education. If they're sick, we're paying for their uh, medical bills. We're paying for them to have food. We're paying for um, them to you know, just have all of their basic needs met. They also go to church. They're learning to love the Lord. Um, and they're safe, which is really important. A child, when I was there, who's a 13-year-old mother to a four-month-old child, because she was in a place that wasn't safe. And um, we want these kids to, to not be in that kind of danger. Okay, the next slide. So there's a, a couple of our kiddos right there. Um, in this, the picture at the top, that's one of the streams and some of the kids collecting water. You'll often see kids carry little um, laundry soap bottles uh, around to school and different places. Those are their water bottles. They recycle them and scoop their water and carry it um, when they go back and forth to school. And in the bottom picture, oh, can we go right back just a second, Eddie? Okay. The lady in the red shirt, her name is Jackie, and she's taking care of several of our kids right now. And they cook in these outdoor kitchens that are wood-fired and um, She's making a dish called ugali, which is what, that's our staple food in Kenya. Okay, the next slide. That's my sponsor, Child Purity. Phil and I sponsor her. I met her last year when I was in Kenya, and when I came back, I just couldn't quit thinking about her, so she's mine now. <laughs> I just love her. Uh, she's 13 years old. Uh, here's some more pictures from uh, Jackie's home where she's taking care of some of our children. Uh, the bottom picture is their shower. I just thought I would show that. It's the, I keep pointing at the wall. Sorry, you guys are probably like, what is she pointing at? Because you're looking up here. Um, it's their, their shower. Everything is, is outside. They don't have any indoor plumbing. We visited the schools that our children go to, and um, the kids were so excited. We were mobbed when we arrived. And, and at one point, I was up against the vehicle, and I couldn't even move because they were like, just dozens, if not a hundred children, um, so excited that we came to visit. Okay, so we had the opportunity to visit a deaf school while we were there. We heard about this deaf school from a Kenyan man who had been reaching out to the director of his hand saying, the children there need help, they don't have enough to eat. So while we were in Kenya, we surprised them, they had no idea we were coming. We showed up and the administrators were so overjoyed. The school was ran so well, the teachers were amazing. Um, we just were just so in love with the school instantly. But in Kenya, a lot of the children don't have birth certificates. So if you don't have a birth certificate, they don't fund these children, but the school's not gonna turn them away. A lot of times children um, in Kenya who are deaf are abandoned by their parents, so some of them don't really have anywhere to go. But it's a residential school, and so they're getting very little funding. We looked in their pantry, they have 93 children, and they had enough food for one day. So we were like, we have to do something about this. And we put something up on Facebook, and in less than 48 hours, we had $4,000 donated. We were able to buy 4,000 pounds of rice and beans. We were able to buy vegetables. We were able to buy new mattresses. Can we go to the next slide? You can see one of the mattresses that some of the children sleep on. Um, so we were able to get new mattresses, and when we showed up, and the women that, that taught there were in tears. They said, we saw a miracle here today. So that was really awesome, and now we're going to continue to raise funds to help that these children have enough to eat every month. So there's some more of the deaf school. We can go on to the next one. Oh, just more of the deaf school. There's the mattresses you can see in the back. Okay, so these two children belong to a widow. We went to visit this widow. She was at work, and she works about seven miles away from her house, and she has to walk um, to work, and um, her job is to take a hoe and break up really rocky soil all day long, and she makes maybe 70 cents a day in the U.S. Uh, we drove her to her home, and the little boy in the green was there with his brother, which is the little boy in the striped shirt, I thought the little boy in green was about 18 months because he's so malnourished. He was three. Uh, his brother is maybe four or five, and they stay home alone all day. 
There was no electricity, no lights, there was no food in the house, there was nothing. And this little boy's crying, and you could tell he thought, is mom coming home, where's mom at? And so um, we are going to be working with her to try to find some way that she can earn money while taking care of her children or come up with a plan for her children and providing food because it just broke my heart seeing these little bitties there all by themselves out in the country where anything could happen. Okay, next slide. Um, this woman um, is also a widow, and those are some of her cuties that we went and visited, and we um, are helping them as well. Her name is Lynetti. And there's some more of Lynetti's kids. I tried to give them little toys and candy everywhere I went. Um, one girl called me the, the human pinata because I just <laughs> had balloons and bubbles and candies and planes and just little things to make them smile. So we raised money last year to buy bug beds for another orphanage, and um, several of you actually purchased beds, so thank you. This, this is the orphanage where those children live. Uh, we delivered clothing to them. Um, I did an activity with them. We talked about God being king of kings, and we made crowns, and um, we had a nice visit there. And there are some of the beds um, I got to see in person that we um, raised the money for. And the brand new baby Davis, I was born in November. I've been looking forward to meeting him, and I got to see him on this trip. And um, so I'll tell you a little bit. These are some community people that live near where we're building. Um, the little boy in the blue is one of the locals. And it was funny because when I got there, we didn't spend much time on the property last year because there was nothing going on yet. But I got to know um, some of the kids and I had bubbles, and I was blowing bubbles with them last year. When I showed up this year and they saw me, they all ran up and they went, so they remembered that I was the girl with the bubbles. And so I've gotten to know them. Eddie, can we go back just a second? So um, I was sitting up here the Sunday, the day after I got back from Kenya. I was feeling kind of numb because you have to so much to process. And I was just like wondering, you know, I mean, yeah, I interviewed all the children. We're going to help find the sponsors. We met all these people. I really got to know people in a deeper way this year than I even did last year. I felt like there were some real connections formed. I didn't have some big spiritual encounter. I didn't have a chance to really evangelize or do a lot of ministry that I thought I would be doing on this trip. And I just thought, is it enough? And Tim got up here and he said, let's play How Great Is Our God. And all of a sudden, like, it just broke me. And God showed me this little boy, Jeremiah, who's up there in the top two pictures. Our team met Jeremiah last year. And we went to visit him. He has cerebral palsy. And he, his grandparents take care of him because his parents abandoned him. He's not able to go to school because there are no schools for children with his disability that are within a distance he could travel to. They don't have transportation. There's, there's really um, no option for him. So we went and visited Jeremiah. We took him some little gifts. And he was really excited. And he can't speak. And he can't really use his hands very well. He can walk a little bit, but it's extremely difficult. But um, I was giving him some socks that the women's ministry had donated a bunch of supplies I took. And there were some Ninja Turtle socks in there. And he seemed really excited about them. And I said, well, let's see if they fit. And so I knelt down in the dirt floor of their house, and I'm putting socks on his feet. And God just brought that to mind. Like, you were there for the people, and you were loving the people. And the last day that we were there, I was on the property, and he walked way down this long hill, and it was really difficult. His, his feet are deformed and walking is very dangerous for him. He could fall. And one of the workers came and said, look, your friend, your friend. And he was across the street. So I went and found him and he just wanted to give me a hug. And he went through all that trouble to say bye to me before I left. And he went through all that trouble. And I gave him a sucker and I helped him eat it because he can't hold it. And I put my arm around him and I walked him back home. And God showed me this is about relationships. That little boy blessed me that day. He went out of his way for me. And, you know, I think when we go to Kenya, it's showing people, like, we're going out of our way because we love you, too. And um, we're doing some great things there. This, this mission center is going to bless people for years and generations to come. The children that go there that are going to know the Lord. The children that are going to go there and get educated. The children that are going to be healthy and safe. For, for so on. But the whole community... Um, it's just amazing what's going on there, and I'm so excited. I can't wait to go back. Um, I, I just feel like 
I wish I could be in two places at once because I just want to be there and I want to be here. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've had some people approach me about wanting to go with me. And if you guys would ever want to do um, a mission trip, I would be happy to lead you all to Kenya on a trip. Um, just let me know if that's something you would want to do. But um, thank you for allowing me this time to share. And thank you to all of you that gave, the women's ministry, the individuals that you know, put a little extra money in my pocket that I could buy some supplies or get the things we needed um, for the church making a donation and for the prayers. I mean, God is so good and so faithful and he is glory to God overseeing this whole project because everything that could have gone wrong and should have gone wrong didn't go wrong because he has put the right people, he has opened doors, he has just done tremendous things and, and this is a God anointed project and I can't wait to share with you you know when we're further along